Skywatch Media News for March the 9th, 2022. Over the past few decades, seismologists have been warning us that much of the central U.S. is at high risk for a devastating earthquake. On March the 3rd, hundreds of geologists and emergency management personnel devoted to earthquake preparedness met in St. Louis to discuss potential emergency recovery plans. In the meeting's wake, a warning was issued to residents of the Mississippi Valley encouraging them to prepare for an eventual 7.0 plus magnitude earthquake. Over the years, the notion of a major catastrophe along the New Madrid Fault has fallen on deaf ears, especially among those most affected in the event of a devastating earthquake. But there is a sudden urgency on the part of FEMA to alert the public to the dangers that lie in wait in this vulnerable region of the country. Although the fear of a potential catastrophe in the Midwest may seem a bit unwarranted at this time, the warnings should not be ignored, and here is why. We often associate earthquakes with the West Coast, and for obvious reasons, since most of the big quakes have taken place out west along the San Andreas Fault in recent years. What has been forgotten over the years is that the U.S. has another active fault zone that happens to be the most dangerous in the country. The fault line stretches for more than 200 miles into six states, but it also has a severe threat zone that encompasses 15 states. When the new Madrid gives way, it will be unlike any that we have experienced. It just so happens that the fault line is susceptible to extremely shallow earthquakes that occur in the range of between 3 and 15 miles depth. Shallow earthquakes equate to more violent shaking on the surface due to having considerably less insulation with which to absorb the seismic waves being thrust from the epicenter. Back in the year 1811 and 1812, the true potential of the New Madrid seismic zone was felt. The first quake was a magnitude 7.5, unleashed on December 16, 1811, in northeast Arkansas. And the second quake was a magnitude 7.3 that occurred in the region of New Madrid, Missouri, on January 23, 1812, which was followed by another strong aftershock two weeks later on February the 7th. Although these quakes were devastating, they occurred at a time when the population was much less dense and the structures were much smaller. The danger with the new Madrid Fault lies with the potential damage that it can incur, since it encompasses such a vast area when compared to the West Coast. The map details the damage and seismic shaking area of a 6-plus quake that occurred along the New Madrid Fault in the year 1895, compared with the 1994 Northridge earthquake, a magnitude 6.7 that sent damaging seismic waves throughout L.A. The 1895 earthquake along the New Madrid involved a region one-third the size of the mainland U.S. So as you can see, it is a recipe for tectonic disaster. Not only do the people in this region have to fear the larger damage zone, but they also have to worry about their level of preparedness, since seismic waves traveling with energy across larger swaths of land would collapse many of the unprepared structures. The damage would be spread across many states, and it would be catastrophic. The New Madrid seismic zone is very unique, and that it is situated in the middle of the North American tectonic plate. And according to a standard plate tectonic theory, it is not even supposed to exist. Earthquakes in this zone are not understood because it is nowhere near a plate boundary where the majority of quakes would occur. A series of studies conducted on the fault line dating back to the year 2009 determined that an earthquake of magnitude 7.7 .7 would result in major damage across eight states, including the probability that over seven million people would be without modern utilities for an extended period of time. There is another important consideration. 
FEMA has spent a great deal of time and effort in warning people about the earthquake potential of the New Madrid zone, but they have been strangely silent on the potential dangers imposed as a result of the fracking industry. Fracking in the United States has proven to cause tectonic plate instability by injecting water into plates, which permeates the crevices and contributes to the instability of the bedrock. Back in 2015, the state of Oklahoma had recorded nearly 900 earthquakes, all above magnitude 3.0. Prior to the year 2009, there were but a handful in the entire state. To further complicate the earthquake potential created by fracking, back in the summer of 2017, an energy industry named Woolsey was actively pursuing a fracking permit for a site located in southeast Illinois, not far from the New Madrid fault line. Drilling this close to a seismic zone could undoubtedly lead to severe consequences. It would be a disaster in waiting. The permit was approved, but fortunately the fracking company withdrew its application and the drilling operation never took place. The New Madrid seismic zone has been in the watchful eyes of scientists geologists, and end-of-times theorists since the fateful day in the year 1811. It has been a threat ever since. Although the residents that live along its borders acknowledge that it is a substantial threat, they have mostly ignored the warnings from FEMA. As for their involvement, FEMA seems to know that something is going to happen but they have only recently taken an instrumental role in earthquake preparedness in this region, and that is no coincidence. The magnetic North Pole's southward drift is accelerating dramatically. Over the past few centuries, the North Pole has been moving at a rather leisurely pace of about 15 kilometers or 9 miles per year. But a few years prior to the turn of the century, it started speeding up. And since the year 2020, it has been drifting southwards at close to 64 kilometers or 40 miles per year. The magnetic North Pole crossed the international date line in October of 2017, passing within 240 miles of the geographic North Pole, and is now heading towards the Russian province of Siberia at an accelerated pace. The Earth's magnetic field is generated by its metallic core. Deep below the Earth's surface, there are tussling magnetic blobs that are pulling the pole's location southwards. By analyzing magnetic field maps and the manner in which they change over time, scientists have been able to pinpoint a change in the circulation patterns of flow below Canada that has caused a patch of magnetic field at the core's edge, deep within the Earth, to be stretched out. This has weakened the Canadian patch and resulted in the pole shifting towards Siberia. It comes down to interpreting what the compasses are telling us, since the consequences of this phenomenon indicates that the world magnetic model will have to be updated periodically with the pole's current location and where it will be in the next few years. The model's updating is imperative for navigation systems used by ships, by Google Maps, as well as in all smartphones. As for the runaway magnetic North Pole, there is no telling where it will eventually end up. On March 5th, an extremely bright fireball entered the Earth's atmosphere and was seen over Italy and Croatia at around 9 p.m. local time. The slow-moving fireball was visible for nine seconds. Stay safe, everyone. Thanks for watching, and always keep looking to the sky.